set up all right. I mean, uh, this is the room where I work. <laughs> I think it's totally fine. I, I was wor I was worried about the same thing too. I was like, oh my gosh, I hope the background looks okay and stuff. But... And the thing is that I can see only part of the window and part of the wall, and everybody who I speak to can see like most of the room. So <laughs> I have to make it tidy every single time <laughs> I have a call with somebody. But I, I don't mind your recording, so go, go on. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go. I'll do. Go ahead and uh, get the intro started and stuff, and then um, and we could just have a conversation. That's basically okay. it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, hey guys, this is Lewis from. And, oh, and by the way, Helen, I'm I'm recording this offline and like not live on YouTube. I'm not sure if I made that clear. So that that way I can just I can also show it to you before I upload it too and stuff. Just you know, just in case you want to see it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So, hey guys, this is Lewis from Level of Web Dev, and uh, and I have Helen with me here today. And Helen is one of my favorite designers I've ever seen. I've been following her for some time now on Instagram and Dribble, and she's a huge inspiration to me not only as a designer but as an entrepreneur. She has over 15,000 followers on Instagram with a super engaging audience, and she's growing very quickly. I'm so grateful to have her here on my YouTube channel, and I wanted to introduce her to you guys. So, hi, Helen. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so... Words of, I didn't actually receive any comment from anyone uh, for me being an inspiration in terms of being an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> that's something new. <laughs> I, I I think so. I mean, I, I I've been following you for 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 a little while now, and um, I'm just in awe of your just your feed too, um, how you put it together, and looking back, it's pretty amazing the way you've done to where. Each post is like a little tidbit of really insightful information to remember, and that's why I go back constantly um, to to get that. So thank you. Okay, is it still kind of giving you a poor connection? No. No. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep going. So uh, where where are you calling from? I'm in Ukraine, Kiev. Um, so I mostly live here, but you know, I'm a freelancer. So this year I was traveling to Croatia and to Warsaw and to Berlin. So I'm like moving a bit, but um, I'm not working when I travel. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> so wh wh what do you mean? Like, like you only work? What do you mean? Typical freelancer uh, works everywhere. And because I, I really value the time I spend uh, in front of computer, and I just can't work with a laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very uncomfortable for me, so I tend to like die before I travel, and I work like 14 hours per day. Um, but I finish everything off before I leave uh, because I. In that way, I kind of ensure that all my clients are happy and uh, they are not touching me when I'm off and I can have a rest because, you know, having a break when you are a manager of yourself is really, it's really hard because the more you work, the more you earn and because we are young and we are creative and we have that mental <laughs> power to work extra hours, you want to keep doing that, you know, so yeah. Yes. And, and the, it's so crazy that uh, I, I love that you're from Ukraine, and I think that's so cool. And do you what 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 would you say is your ratio of your client base? Like, uh, for, where are they from? Like, um, is it uh, from America or is it from or all around the world? Or what 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 does that ratio look like? Okay, so right now my biggest client is from Denmark. Um, Wow. I say biggest because the biggest project, uh, he has the biggest project. Um, I have another project which is going to be finalized and uh, the client is from New Zealand. Uh, I actually didn't know that it's winter there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Then I have an uh, ongoing client from United States and um, 
I had like a lot of finalized projects with clients from US. Yeah. Um, and also I have Canadian guys. I've made one project for them and now I'm working on another one. Mm -hmm. Hold on. And well, I will not mention the leads that I have, which are not con converted uh, yet into clients, but sure, sure. usually uh, clients are from US, Canada, some European countries like Germany or uh, Denmark, Netherlands, uh, or from New Zealand and Australia. And I, I really thought that I would not make it because the oh. <laughs> if you work for the United States, uh, you have time difference, right? Yeah. So the New Zealand is like upside down. So you have, again, a huge time difference. Um, but yeah, it's okay. Turned out to be fine, manageable. You know, I sleep five hours per day uh, maximum. So I think everything's possible. That's awesome. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so how did you get started with design? How, what, what, what's your story? How, how did you get started with it? Um, in 2012, I think it was, or 11, uh, I was studying at the university and I was studying printing and publishing technology in um, our technical university in Ukraine here. And um, I was thinking about becoming a print uh, designer because I wanted to work in a um, fashion magazine mm -hmm. like Vogue. And by the oh, way, wow. that time we had no book in Ukraine. Uh, it only appeared here after I graduated. But I was like dreaming about that super glossy uh, image of a girl working in a magazine and uh, designing the layout of the actual um, printing product. And then um, the industry changed and uh, the books and magazines became less popular and they moved to digital. And my parents decided that, okay, we have a guy, uh, he has a, like a small magazine about jewelry, and they have organized for me to go there for like internship, I would say. But at that time, I didn't know anything like basics of Photoshop and Illustrator. And the designer there, he made me study in design Photoshop and Illustrator in four weeks. Oh, wow. <laughs> Because I had to do the, the work, you know, right, right. And, and he helped me. Um, so that was my start. And after that, um, I worked like a graphic designer um, in a restaurant holding, you know, the company that doesn't change uh, chains around the city. Um, and it was pretty boring. You know, I have that IGTV video on my Instagram and I always say that I got bored here, so I moved there and, you know, I am never sitting like on one place because the um, job uh, in the office is pretty stable mm -hmm. and uh, you just get bored. Then I worked in an Intercontinental Hotel. You probably know that that's a big chain. Um, and I was the only designer, so I felt like, you know, I had the power to say that this is going to take me a week and nobody could even argue, <laughs> but that's not the best <laughs> way. You know? um, yeah. And then I decided to go to advertising and I didn't like it. Oh, I really? Mean, uh, here, um, I worked in um, Havas Worldwide. Um, and it was not because of the company, because company was great, but... Um, we have different mindset here and uh, clients from European on, or um, American clients, uh, they have more like their, their mind is towards uh, something new. Um, and here a lot of clients are like, they want to stick to that particular style they have developed in early zeros, like in 2000s, and uh, <laughs> they don't really want to do anything new. So I just thought, okay, fine, I'll find something else. And I went to freelance. <laughs> um, and it all started from like logos and stuff like that until I found a client who wanted to make um, an application and web application connected to email communication. So basically I had to learn how to do it. So I'm totally self 
taught from graphic designer to UI UX. Wow. Yeah. That's so, amazing. No. Nah. <laughs> Well, I, I can say it's like a typical path of a lot of people, I would say. Um, and I worked at that company for three and a half years, partly on a freelance. And then we had an office. But eventually I decided to go and work on my own. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, right now I can manage up to 10 projects at the same time. So I have constant update in my portfolio. I have my dribble. I have my Instagram. And all these um, like cases, they only add to my professional experience. Yeah. So I'm not sure I will ever want to switch back to the office work again. Sure, sure. And do you where um, where do you feel you get the your your you get your prospects? Like where is Dribble the best place where? You, you feel you get lead generation or is it referrals or is it Instagram? Where, where would you say? Okay. So for me, um, um, I, I'm not sure that, you know, I started Instagram in December. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I have a screenshot that has like, I have 92 followers and it's that December the 9th. Oh my I gosh. Uh, to one day make a post like before, after. <laughs> so back then I couldn't have leads from Instagram. I started from Upwork um, after advertising agency. So it was like four years ago or maybe five. I don't really remember. So I already had experience and accomplished projects on Upwork before I went to freelance uh, back in October uh, 2018. Um, and all my leads came from Upwork and then the word of mouth, um, they just recommended me to some of their like friends or business partners. So I had a couple of leads from just people recommending Instagram for now. I have like, I, I think 15 leads, but I'm not sure they're going to convert. Huh. And, uh, because they, mm, Sometimes people, um, well, maybe my rates are too high for them, but um, what I face is that uh, people are just not saying their budget. So um, if I say like, okay, this is going to cost X, Y, and Z, and um, if they disagree, they just don't reply. Okay, well, <laughs> that's life, you know. So I can't say Instagram brings me leads. Um, although I'm really hoping that the one that I have right now, I'm speaking to her, will become my lead. <laughs> yeah. um, but mostly Upwork. And I had two leads from Dribble. But if you've seen my Dribble, I have like 200 followers there. And if people are like finding me there, that's great. I had two leads having 200 followers. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So right now, the main source is like uh, is Upwork. Uh, and then, so, cause I was kind of, I was really interested if, if Instagram was actually providing any leads. Cause it's like, you hear about it, it like, you know, a lot of the gurus, right. And I, I feel like a lot of people feel, may feel the same way, you know, are, are pushing for Instagram to give you leads, but I, it's like, you have a, a great Instagram and it seems very targeted and I'm like, okay, if she doesn't get leads, you know, then then I don't know who can. <laughs> so uh, you know, I uh, I think that uh, people I uh, speak to on Instagram, they do have leads from Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, but the girl that I know, she's from another country, but she's an illustrator. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that nobody have has leads from Instagram. I'm sure, I'm sure. pretty sure that people do have. Um, maybe I'm not like big enough, uh, to grab leads from Instagram. Maybe my following is more towards, um, being educated and, um, you know, I'm not sure, but all I can say that, uh, Instagram for me is, um, me expressing my will to help others through, uh, knowledge, um, and stuff like that. I, 
for now, the only thing I can say about Instagram is I, I, I didn't have the feedback of my work for a long time. Mm. And right now I have it constantly. And this is what makes me happy about my um, Instagram profile. Okay. And because I give people free advice, they give me the feedback. And I have like screenshots of uh, a lot of messages people send me like, oh, thank you, you're so kind and things like that. So I keep them and it makes me warm, you know. Oh, well, that's 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 wonderful. That's that's a lot of like a lot of how I feel about YouTube, too, on some videos that I have. It's like, you know, uh, and, you know, it, it, it's it gives you a, it, it at least gives you like um, inspiration and motivation, you know, to keep to keep going with it. So that's really cool. It does. It does. And everything you do, you are thinking about, OK, I need to do this design in the way that it's postable on Dribbble, in the way that it's postable on Instagram. And when you have like bigger following, you are kind of responsible to spread out only the best thing you can mm -hmm. and never do the shitty work. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of making you more disciplined in design, sure. I would say. So, so real quick, what would you say is the number one for, for, because it seemed like you built it really, truly organically because, um, I have seen, you know, I've seen other people with your same amount of followers and they have very low engagement, you know, and I kind of know that, okay, they didn't get there naturally. Right. And then, but you, with yours, I really feel like from the outside and from I've seen a lot of Instagram, it does seem like you really did it organically and your engagement is so high and people really, and your work is amazing, so it makes sense, but what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of profiles where they have like more than 50K followers, but the amount of likes they have same as mine yeah exactly so if you think about it i have only fifteen thousand, and i have like on average 1000 1200 likes per post and by the way we're not gonna see that in a couple of weeks <laughs> so uh. instagram is removing likes if you know what uh, yeah it does uh, in australia they already removed likes no way yes just what? google the, google it because now we're going to see only uh, that, okay, you will go to my page and see somebody like this and others, and that's it. And only I will know how many people liked my posts. Oh, so my I'm gosh. Sure what's that going to bring into the blogger's uh, sphere? Uh, but right now, after they introduce this update everywhere in the world, I think people will... Um, People's decision whether or not to like the post or no will not depend on the amount of likes anymore, which can be good and bad at the same time. So we will see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's so crazy. In terms of uh, accounts that um, have like a lot of followers but have no engagement, um, I've seen those when I was little, uh, little meaning like, a thousand follower, two thousand follower. I wanted them to um, like post my work on their feed or feature me in stories, and I was writing actually to those bigger profiles. Um, and I've noticed that people who took money for this, they had low engagement, and people who did it for free, they had good engagement. So <laughs> the logic, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, well, obviously, I didn't pay uh, for being featured, but um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, all I know about Instagram algorithm is that if you buy bots, they will drag your account down in the algorithm. Mm. Uh, so, like, my advice to anyone never go for buying fake accounts for your following, like, mm -hmm. they will drag the engagement and then and then what, what would you say is your is your number one tip for or like how, how did how do you feel like what, what what do you think is the number one way that you 
um, you got from, I mean, December from zero to now, which is a really short amount of time to uh, 15,000 followers. Uh, the tip is when you create a post, um, first of all, don't create a post that everybody else have already created. Like, for example, I've made a post uh, about how to start in UI UX only because people were asking me to make this post. But I know that every designer who does the blog in Instagram made the same kind of post. So I would never do what everybody else already did. When I do the post, I'm thinking, would I save it? Not like it, save it. Mm. Would I save mm -hmm. it for coming back to it later? And I, I have like uh, a list of posts that I personally save uh, to come back later. Uh, and um, I try to make my posts uh, savable for people. And you know that the amount of saves I have is bigger than the amount of likes that I have. Oh, wow. Like, they, I can even show you if you want. Sure. <laughs> that's, um, that's amazing. This is not just me. I think some people were sharing their statistics and they said, like, had the same thing. Hold on, where is it? Start in the one UX design. No, that's the same. <laughs> but sometimes Instagram bans me for commenting my own posts, you know? That That's weird. I wonder why they would do that. Did I lie to you? No. <laughs> oh, here it is. Uh... Okay. Oh, okay. There you go. There you can see it on the side on the right hand side, right? Four K. Yeah. So two thousand so, versus four K. Wow. Yeah, this is one of the old ones uh, from thirty first of May. Um, the latest were, were having bigger amount of saves as well, but I think right now they're like pretty much the same. I thought to show you this one, like tips uh, on how to become UI UX designer, but they have the same amount. Mm. <clears throat> but a lot of the time, like you first have saves and then likes come after. <laughs> I, I don't know how that works. If I save something, I like it. So <laughs> I don't know who are those people who save, but they don't like. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so w w which which platform would you say is, well, I guess Upwork. If Because I, I was going to ask which platform would you say is the best for the, the de design industry? Yeah, I would say Upwork because I have no idea how to promote myself on Dribbble. And um, it's pretty hard because... There are lots of designers there with huge amount of following coming back from 2009 oh, yeah. when I know most like stuff about design. And it's going to be very hard for everybody to beat them up. Um, yeah, and because Dribbble does not allow you to like, like a lot, comment a lot, and uh, so on and so forth. So I, I don't know how to do it. So yeah, I think Upwork is good for people who are starting because there are clients there with budgets from like lowest to pretty substantial. Um, but again, this is not going to be easy. No. I, I said it to a lot of followers, this is not easy. As I said in one of my posts, make sure you have cash for at least three months to survive. Because first client on any freelancer website comes very slow. Because how would they trust you? They haven't seen that you have performed on the site before. Yeah. So it's going to be a hard job. Absolutely. And that's why I really do think like doing YouTube and things like Instagram and at least putting content out as examples or education out as examples. Because as so I'm thinking at the very least, if somebody, if a client from Upwork sees your Instagram, they're going to be like, oh, she is super legit. And it's just going to make it even easier for them to, to purchase from you. Yes. Yeah. yes. Right now, yes. I already inserted uh, Instagram handle with amount of followers to uh, my proposal that I sent and to my presentation. And I, I feel it works. But anyways... 
<laughs> I'm on up for more than four years. I think that that works too. Oh, I'm sure that works just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where where do you see yourself in the next five years? Like, what what? Well, yeah, where, where do you see yourself in the next five years? I will say where I can see me in the next year. Okay, okay. Because next no five years, yeah. it's going to be very hard. <laughs> okay, during 2020, I'm going to launch my uh, own course. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, specifically how to have a business around yourself in freelance design industry. Not the office, but freelance. Okay. Um, because being an entrepreneur and doing everything yourself is not for everybody. It's very hard. And if somebody would tell me that I'm going to face so much shit, <laughs> I would think twice. <laughs> yeah, I even, I even try to like a little bit educate people. What will wait for you? What is waiting for you out there in freelance world? Sleepless nights, clients from different countries, they demand all the time, you have to be online, you never work, you never have like a weekend when you can't, when you just don't reply to emails or don't reply to Skype, Slack, whatever. So there are pros and cons and I want to make a course about how to manage it, uh, not just how to be a designer, but how to manage like your, yourself as a creative entrepreneur. Beautiful. That's one. Secondly, right now I'm working on the free, um, I want to make like a free course, but I call it repository, like on GitHub, on GitHub or GitLab. Um, <laughs> knowledge. So what I've noticed is that people, um, they can Google anything, but they don't want to. They want to ask somebody who knows better. And well, it could be me, it could be any people who are out there on Instagram with a substantial following amount. Um, and I thought that, okay, I'm like answering the same questions every day, every week for more than a couple of months now since for more than, yeah, a couple of months now since I reached, I think seven K. Yeah. And it all started there. So why don't I make like a repository, like, um, a knowledge base where I will say, I use this, go here to find this. Mm. You want a free font, go here. You want a free image, go here. Courses for free are here. Courses paid are here. Those are nice. I know those people or I kind of heard that this is okay. Yeah. And like to have like a package for people who just want to get started. Um, if I had a package like that uh, when I started, that would be awesome. But that time nobody did that. I know people are doing these things right now for free but when i started there was nothing like that so i thought that okay i will make somebody's life easier um yeah <laughs> and uh, also in the next year i'm hoping i will have my own youtube channel as well but right now i am i can't find time for this oh yeah you probably know it uh, about like you don't just record videos you uh, use like iMovie or, or whatever you use Final Cut okay. to make it to, you edit it you spend time for me like even IGTV video was like a challenge because mm -hmm. I had to edit it and I had to shoot it a couple of times and I'm not really I'm pretty expressive you know I shake my arms all the time so <laughs> Maybe that's that's good. Maybe that's bad. But um, I think I need to go and uh, like consult with somebody on the how to perform in front of the camera. Um, I'm not really confident in that to go on YouTube right now. Yeah, and also I think that um, I can educate people through Instagram. So the YouTube is going to be like you know if I want to make longer videos. Right, more about, long form. Yeah. And also, I would want to get married and have kids as any <laughs> other girl. <laughs> yes, of course. Not sure if that's going to happen in one year, but, you know. <laughs> but, but you never know. But... <laughs> never know. <laughs> never. <say> never. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And, well, okay, so 
a cup I want to ask a couple of things. Are you going to because it seems like your own website would like handle all of that really well. And so are one are you going to have a website and are you going to two for the course uh where are you going to feature that and what type of platform are you going to use like are you going to use like Teachable or Thinkify or I'm going to use Teachable for my free uh, knowledge base and see how it goes. Um, I've started it uh, a week and a half ago, and it seems so easy to use. Mm -hmm. uh, not sure that I want to launch my own website because I, I worked with IT guys, and I have a developers who I know and work with. And having a website means you have to spend money on a Google ranking, on CEO, um, SEO, I mean. Mm -hmm. And I'm not actually prepared for that. I mean, I don't think that I actually need a website. Mm. Uh, and, okay, uh, the website, what what for will I use it? For the courses, I'm going to use Teachable or maybe CourseCraft. Um, I'm not sure which one to pick um, for the paid course. But mm -hmm. website, maybe if I have my own design agency, that would really require having an uh, own website. Um, but right now, um, I, I'm not thinking about design agency right now because this is connected to with managing people more than being creative yourself. So maybe when I'm 30, <laughs> <laughs> not sure. I, so. I I guess I was just thinking in terms of the repository and and uh, traffic coming in and out that you would probably already get is uh, would be powerful and to me like the biggest thing because I, I the biggest thing for me is that I don't like I don't I I like to because I I don't trust the Instagram or YouTube or even Upwork a lot of the times to in the long run because they can change whenever they like like and that kind of irks me a lot so like trying to get emails and then and then trying to do what upwork does and instagram work from or youtube does and do it on my like try to get them to train them to come to the website only then i feel like is is ultimately probably better for the long run but what yes. you know what i mean because instagram it's like it's ridiculous now they're taking off likes which 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 could be good or bad, but we don't know, you know, and and it's out of our control. And sometimes Upwork, like they just made a change in terms of connects now cost um, like one cent or something like that. Fifteen. F Fifteen cents. That's right. Which you know could be good, could be bad, but it's it is a different change. Like it's radic radically different. And they remember can... they changed uh, their fee from ten percent to twenty percent. What, what 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 do you mean? What what does that mean? Ten percent to by twenty percent. Well, right now you have to pay Upwork twenty percent from the first five hundred dollars. Oh, that's right. That's right. And yes. Before, when I started, it was ten percent. I was shocked. Twenty percent, really? From five hundred dollars, it's like taxes in my country, you know. <laughs> it's <laughs> you know, you know. Oh, hello, Helen. I think we have poor connection again. Okay, okay. I think we're. Can you hear me okay now? Yes, yes. Okay, sorry about that. And you? I can hear you okay. Um, and so you said it get, it's taxed in your country, right? That was a joke, actually. But okay. it's uh, <laughs> twenty percent is a lot of money. Um, I, I'm not sure why they they take twenty percent. If you think about it, there are millions of freelancers on Upwork, and they have like twenty percent from every five hundred dollars you earn, like for the start when you work for one client. A lot of people work for small clients, so they lose 20%. And then you have like 
in Europe, the biggest taxes are in Switzerland, 55%. Oh, my gosh. So you have to pay another half. What's the point of working through Upwork then? Exactly. I mean, you might as well. I mean, it's, it's yeah. So, I mean, that's that's that can be super tough. I mean, but I guess if it's a place to get started for, you know, to get referrals started, then that may be really good, you know. But yeah. so what what are your passions outside of work? Okay, I do sport. Um, I am I'm going like doing pole sports for five months now, if you know what it is. Um, I don't. <laughs> it's like uh, well, it's um, there are some misconceptions i think it's called in english um about yes. this kind of stuff you know that they when they dance around the stick the pole oh okay okay oh i thought i thought it was pull like water but pole pull nah. but it's actually um it's not the, the the thing that they do in strip clubs on high heels no that's not that <laughs> <laughs> they there are like um i think there are three um three separate like um ways in that kind of pole sport stuff stuff and i'm pretty lousy at that shit but i i try <laughs> and um um in autumn i'm planning to go to the gym again because i think i i, I can't find some time for that um and it's pretty cold here in ukraine what else can you do um <laughs> Also, obviously, I like to travel, um, but it can't happen really often, as I said before, because we all need to work uh, and uh, uh, earn some money to afford ourselves a longer, longer distance travel. Like yeah. I would like to go to uh, to um, something like Barbados, but from here, it's very long distance, and that's why it's pretty expensive. Same goes for like japan i want to go to japan since i was 10 because i used to draw those animated characters at yes. school and i'm so dreaming about it but from from europe traveling to japan could be pretty tough because there is like one uh, f a straight flight without um, stops um direct flight and i'm not gonna take the direct flight it's insanely expensive so you have to like plan the trip ahead so yeah i would like to travel all around the world apart from uh, very cold countries because i can't stand the the cold bit <laughs> <laughs> but you live in ukraine uh, yes uh, but it's not that cold you know oh it's not I, oh, okay okay i want to go to iceland so much but i will never go to iceland in winter i would go to iceland in summer because I would not stand uh, this freezing cold that they have. I don't know. Mm, what else about my other passions? Other passion. I've made Instagram my passion. You know, I had that. Um, I wanted to make a blog for a long time because when I went, when I uh, studied at university, uh, that printing and publishing bit, I wanted to write a book. And I could write pretty, pretty good, but I then decided to not to do it. And right now I have all to write and spread my thoughts. So let's say Instagram <laughs> is my passion as well. Um, previously, I used to take photos. I had a nice camera, but then I, I thought, OK, I will not make it um, Mm, professionally because I'm not that passionate about it so I just stopped doing that um, yeah I think that's pretty much it yeah <laughs> that's it well, that's totally cool I mean that's um, I mean uh, well what, what about America do you think you would ever travel to America I tried to apply uh, to American visa in 2017, I think. They didn't give me a visa, but I know why. Um, 
like nowadays, there are a lot of people who are coming to United States from Ukraine and um, like Russia, and they stay there illegally. So these couple of years, as you know, in 2014, we had like um, a riot here. Oh, no. And a lot of people wanted to mm -hmm. just run away. Um, and I think that's the reason why they don't really give visas right now. And obviously, I'm young, not married, I don't have kids, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm not like sticking to one company. Um, and um, yeah, I'm in the eyes of the officer, I'm the potential immigrant, and I understand why they didn't give me a visa. Uh, so maybe when I get married, um, I will try again. But you know, I never felt like that's my destination and I will go there and I will make everything and I will apply 10 times. No, I know people who applied 13 times to get a visa finally, uh, but I, I'm not like that. I will just travel in Europe. There are lots of places I've never been to, but I want to be. Um, and then after that, I will consider United States. But uh, you know, as things go by, I have a feeling that my first trip to U.S. will be not uh, like a tourist trip. I think it's going to be something like a business trip because I had so many clients from U.S. I think one day somebody would like to see me there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that's that's how I was feeling. I was like, yeah, it's. I feel like it's probably going to be a really, really cool business trip, like in L.A. or in New York or something. Some some big agency is going to be like just pay for you round trip and just have an amazing time down there. Yeah, I would love to go to New York. I have friends who've been there a couple of times and the photos, like the city I live in, I feel it's so big and there are so many people. When I look at New York, I can't even imagine how big is that. Yes. <laughs> It, it's uh it's 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 wild to see it's completely ridiculous in new york it's um in austin it's a little similar because that's where i live um uh -huh. but it's not like the traffic is not nearly as bad at all um but the so the the one of the last things i want to ask about which is a really usually a really tough question but i think it's a really good question to ask because it's probably like a, a core question but what 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 would you say? What would you say is your why and like why do you do what you do? That's a really nice question. Uh, okay, <sighs> why do I do UI UX design? Well, here, like it's not only here. People say that uh, you need to find something that you do not because you earn money for it, but because it's like your hobby. So I found this, I can do it every day. I can wake up and start again and start again and start again and I don't get bored. And once I realized that this is it and I'm not getting bored here because as I said previously, I tried a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, yeah, that's it. And also, um, I gained some experience, like, I mean, uh, projects-wise and years-wise in design. And I will come back to my uh, basic wish when I was a kid. I want to write a book. And right now, I feel like when I reach 10 years of experience, I can afford myself to write a book. That's going to happen in the next two and a half years. So... Maybe I will make another dream come true. Um, yeah, so I'm doing this for writing a book as well. That's awesome. So yeah, because I like it. You know, it's I like it. <laughs> well, what would what do you think? Have you thought of a title for your book yet? I haven't, but it's it's going to be something about um, um, the business of design the business of design okay yes well that sounds awesome i mean i'll, I'll buy your book and i'll buy your course i'll make sure to buy both <laughs> 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 
there we go. <laughs> there we go. Absolutely. Hey, I, Brand I bought Brandon's, so I'm going through his right now. So. Uh huh. And I, I thought his cool. he's he's cool. Um, he managed to do a lot of stuff in a very short time, uh, but as you can see, we have slightly different approaches to the feed. So I'm not curating at all. I know a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to curate. I have actually, and I, I think I bumped into accounts who don't even curate in the stories. So they only post their stuff. That's it. Uh, but I'm not sure. Um, they're not big accounts. They're like small accounts. Yeah. Well, but I'm Brandon says some nice things uh, that inspired me when I started my Instagram back in December. So, yeah, I think definitely worth um, hearing and uh, watching those videos for sure. For sure. But I can't wait for yours. I mean, yours and your book. This can be really cool. The course is going to come in 2020. There it is. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> well, um, I think, I think that uh, I think that's great. I mean, um, uh, thank you so much, Helen, uh, for for like being so kind enough to let me do an interview of you on all of this, and hopefully we can talk again soon um, over over Skype. And you know, maybe when you have your curriculum out, or or you know, whenever you'd like uh, uh, on on something new, so. I just wanted to say thank you so much again for everything. And if there's anything else you wanted to go over, let me know. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I actually, I love this um, community work that I do because I met so many interesting people that I would never even bump into online if I didn't do what I do right now. So I will be happy to talk again for sure. And um, yeah, Hopefully it went okay. <laughs> I think it went great. Other than my side probably having some internet issues, I'll, I'll make sure it's fixed next time. But uh, I think it went awesome. And oh, the last thing I want to ask is what? So what? I know this is probably such a dumb question, but um, what is the language? What is your native language? Um, I will say that because my family speaks in Russian, uh, I will say that native is Russian, but. The thing is that we know both at the same time on the same level because the Ukrainian, they teach us at school, so you must know it because you will pass exams and tests to go to the university. Everything's going to be in Ukrainian. But I had Russian at school, so um, yeah, I know both pretty much the same level. But I have to say that my writing in Russian and Ukrainian is crap because for the last God knows how many years, I work for people who don't speak Russian. So even when I worked at the office um, in the hotel, uh, I had a boss, she was from Turkey and she didn't speak Russian. And then I had like, I had another client, he was from Italia and then Italy, and then um, another one from Iraq, and then um, another English speaking work. So. I think uh, sometimes I just put English words in Russian language and then people are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> My mom got used to it. That's, that's the, you know, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So you're trilingual? I think so, yeah. But, you know, um, I will not claim to be fluent English speaker. I think I'm pretty good, but... Um, when you say like you know something hundred percent, you're like never never say that because somebody will catch you on it and say, oh, she said she knows it, but mm, she used uh, wrong tense here. <laughs> so no, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I think you have amazing English, and uh, I do think I really do think you would kill it on YouTube too. Um, so. So yeah, definitely consider that whenever, whenever, whenever you think, because I I think you would do wonderful on YouTube. Oh, can I ask questions? You will cut this if you don't if you don't uh, want it. Of course, no, yeah, no problem. Uh, 
What camera do you use to record your videos on YouTube? Um, so my brother is a videographer and because uh, we have uh, our own like little de boutique design agency and and it's amazing to have him uh, because mm -hmm. Uh, cause we have, uh, I have a key, uh, what I use is, which is super simple is just a Canon T4 I and mm -hmm. it's, it's actually relatively cheap now, which is really great. Um, and then I also, you just use my phone sometimes, um, just make sure that it's in a well-lit spot. I mean, even, even where you're at right now with like the Canon facing you or, or even, uh. Or, or even or even your phone would be just fine as long as what's uh, as long as the audio is really good like that's why I'm using this microphone or I'm always because that's the biggest complaint it's really weird video is not the biggest complaint the biggest complaint that I ever get or I've ever gotten is like the audio the audio has to be at really I mean it has to be at least a standard a certain standard or else people will kind of start to complain it's kind of weird. Okay, I didn't. Um, I had um, like uh, advice uh, from the guy who d does YouTube as well to buy this thing that you put here. Oh, lab. Not yeah. sure how it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and it will make it better. But um, other guys said that I could use my um, earpods, and it will be okay-ish if I'm inside in my room. Yeah, and I close the window and nothing disturbs. Um, but yeah, I once participated in the video shooting and it was awful because once the car passes by, the the microphone is so mm, delicate; it catches everything, and you just you don't go around uh, the room when you record the video. You don't do anything; just stand still and and record it. That's it. <laughs> well, so I'm just trying to grab the information because I'm not sure what to use, which camera to have. Do I have to make lights, or I, I can use this light on the ceiling, or what? What do I do? I mean, I like watching um, good quality video. Yeah. I don't actually care about the video, but I think it comes from my um, profession. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a visual person, not. Uh, uh, audio person, but yeah. Well, I, I'll send I'll send you and a couple. Might... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And this microphone you're using for your YouTube as well, it hangs somewhere here, or or you just use it for like uh, conversations that we have right now. Well, okay. So this one, I I. So I have two setups, uh, one where I have like a shotgun mic that's a different mic than this one. This one is more for, you know, just w like webcam or Skyping. But um, I also use this for tutorials as well. And it's a Yeti mm -hmm. mic. Um, and this one is cool too because it has a feature where it blocks out a lot of the background sound. And it only allows mm -hmm. for the front of your, it's cardioid. So it allows for the front. So it, it's it's also good to do uh, if I'm doing videos inside as well uh, in case a car passes, right? Um, and it doesn't um, – it, it, it shuts the sound out a little bit. So mm. so that's, that's good too. But I'll, I'll send you a couple of videos that I think like um, – that I think you would do like that you – that you could do in terms of setting and like design set wise – because I feel like, I just feel like you would do even better on YouTube, in, in my opinion. But it's just, it's just my opinion. <laughs> that was going to be my last question. Why do you think I'm going to do good on YouTube? You're not the first one who said it to me. And I can't get the straight answer. Oh. Why? <laughs> I think it's because uh, you you seem really down to earth. I mean, you, you are down to earth. As far as I can tell. Like, and you're very... Uh, you're very honest and genuine and trust you, you know, um, visually it just, and then you're, you're beautiful on top of that. So that, that also helps a lot, but 
it does you know if you're if you're beautiful and then you're also genuine but you're not stuck up you know what i mean because you can tell when a very attractive person is stuck up but n nobody wants to listen to a stuck up attractive person what does it mean stuck up it means like cocky or like oh i you know i know everything and you don't know anything arrogant, arrogant yeah 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 cocky okay, i know that <laughs> I'm cocky. In, cocky is a slang right? uh yeah 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 arrogant is a better word it, it, that's a better word anyways but um okay. but yeah and and so you yeah. Yeah. the thing is that i was an ugly girl at school maybe <laughs> that that's kind of you know influenced me today <laughs> so oh i always get shy when people say that i'm beautiful because um there are so many beautiful women here um you can't say she's beautiful oh she's more beautiful oh she's more beautiful and like a lot of women here like supermodels so <laughs> never say that you're the best you know i i hear i hear you 100 percent but that's why I was like, you know, because YouTube is such a visual medium uh, in many ways. That's why it's, you know, it, it, it obviously helps like a lot. But what 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 is more, but what is better is that the combination of, you know, the, the beauty, but also you're an you are a very your expert. It's like you get the best of all worlds. So it's like you have the expert, you have some, you know, you're, you're, you're beautiful and then you have. Uh, you have your the way that you are insightful and the education is also really good. It's organized because it's Instagram. I feel like is just a far cry from that. So that, that's why I, I'm I'm thinking in my mind. Okay, then she would probably do excellent at it. But you know, and then you also people would probably want to know more about you, your passions, and and so I feel like it would just allow it for to everything to open up and to come together and expand uh, and probably generate leads better because I, I have gotten leads from my YouTube and I feel like I'm still not that I'm still growing. I'm very, I'm still pretty small, but you know, 2000 is, is cause it's hard to get subscribers on YouTube, but I mean, not, not that it's not hard on anywhere else, but I just feel like for you, some reason YouTube is, can be extra hard. Like people are brutal on YouTube. Like they're absolutely brutal. Um, and like, what do you mean? huh? What do you mean by saying brutal? Oh, well, they, it's just like, man, some people like they will straight up tell you that this is complete shit, you know? And like, because I feel like Instagram people feel like there's, um, other people looking at you and you're not, you're not, you're not as hateful, but if you, it's just like, people are it's it's just dramatically more anonymous and i feel like um people are extremely honest and if there's one or two things wrong they'll probably call it out but it it it, it, it depends it's it, it really depends if you put a lot of hard if they can if you i mean I, I feel like whatever you put on there because you're going to probably do a great job that's not going to happen at all but there it's just when i was starting <laughs> i pro i promise when I was starting like with another YouTube channel and I didn't have all my, I didn't, I wasn't as professional, right? Then there were some people that were just like blatantly like, boom, like this is wrong. This is wrong. This is terrible, you know, but I don't think that's going to happen with you at all. I, I'm sure whatever you do, you'll do very professional. So it's not a, I'm sure it won't be a problem. First of all, um, I'm not afraid to uh, being hated. <laughs> I had I had direct messages saying like, uh, "I'm so done by watching you smile. How can you smile all the time?" I'm like, "What? <laughs> you don't want to see me smiling? Unfollow me." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I wanted to ask one more question. Do you sure. use Final Cut? Is it worth buying Final Cut? Because I have Mac and I thought like, okay, Final Cut is not that expensive because you buy it once and that's it. Is it worth it or you use something else? I, I think it's absolutely worth it. I, I definitely use Final Cut Pro. Uh, my brother uses Final Cut Pro as well. 
my brother uses Final Cut Pro and DaVinci, but it's because he's a he he does a color he's a color artist as well for for video. But that's that's irrelevant. Um, but Final Cut Pro, yes, I would absolutely say it is one hundred percent worth it. Um, was it, say it again. Is it hard to learn? No, no, it's not. It's not hard to learn. Um, what I've been trying to do, and I'm, uh, what we're trying to do is, my brother and I are, we're trying to put like a, like a really simple guide of like equipment to use for YouTube, but like just for as easy as possible, and like simple edits and coloring for YouTube as well. So on, because he has a video channel, a YouTube channel, and then I was gonna put some on my channel as well. And then I could send them to you and and see if they're helpful at all, you know. Would be nice. <laughs> Would be nice. Because there's there's like so many. It's it's like you said, people. People have all the answers at their fingertips, but they don't want to, because there's so there's so much information now, that it's like too much. it's too much now. Informational noise. This is how it's called. Informational noise. Exactly. And so I think that's where you come in and where I can come in on some things to kind of help guide people because it, you can really like, I've taken advice from some things on YouTube and I was like, no, this is a much better way now that we, now that you've done it, you know what I mean? Now it's like, no, this is a much better way actually. Um, so I feel like we, Brent, my brother and I can actually do some really easy things for YouTube for like equipment set up and setting along with um, along with simple Final Cut Pro tutorials. That's like mm -hmm. one and 101 to get you like started and so that you don't have to worry about anything. You just can learn quickly. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Don't worry, I will watch it. Thank you. We'll have <laughs> one view. That's great. That's, <laughs> that's all we need is one. So. <laughs> Yeah, okay. That that was everything I wanted to ask. Sorry for taking up uh, some additional time. No, uh, you're, you're fine. You're fine. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate it. And um, uh, yeah, I would love to talk again. And I'm going to be obviously looking at your Instagram and stuff and progress. And I wish you the very best and, you know, way more business and more success. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you soon, Helen, and have an amazing day, and I hope you kill it. Yeah, thank you so much. Cheers. Bye-bye, <laughs> bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs>